Good morning, folks. This tiny plasma filament is coming over the northeastern limb of our sun as a solar tornado. Small for the sun, but still two Earth diameters tall. We've got a disaster in China, news about a previously unknown earthquake cycle, a global climate update, and a geomagnetic storm from space weather impact. We'll start there. This is spaceweathernews.com, and we're looking at the last day on our star. Some minor flashing in the large active region as it turns, but not much else. However, the real space weather story is back here at Earth. We've expected a coronal hole stream, then CME impact, and then another coronal stream. But it looks like the CME hit first. Looking at the solar wind telemetry, speed and density rising together is not a coronal hole signature, but CME. Thus far, we are 10 hours or so into the magnetic storm event here at Earth, mostly sticking around in lower levels for now. Remember, we should have at least one more stream coming. If it gets here quickly and is robust whatsoever, we could see some stronger magnetic events, and the electrical and health alerts from space weather would kick in. In terms of solar flaring, that big guy can still make sea flares, but that's like Emeril bragging about a grilled cheese sandwich. The earth-facing quiet has choked the life out of this massive sunspot. Only slight magnetic mixing remains, but he's on his way out as it is. Seismicity has remained low, but the locations continue to be interesting. Another above average in the U.S. with coastlines to the south getting active now as well. Quiet season around this region thus far. And in the last two days, we are also seeing a tremendous uptick in activity at Gamma Lama in Indonesia. Eyes open there. Top news, there's a 31-year sinusoidal periodicity of magnitude 5 earthquakes. That happens to be Saturn's orbital set. Interesting info for Californians as well in that one. MIT with an update to the action at a distance topic we've been following. Also, the first five or six paragraphs are a fun little reminder of how little we understand. Schrodinger's litter box could use a scoop or two. Global climate update. Again, the chart I see going around the net is percentiles that obfuscates the situation and basically eliminates the cold from the maps. More extremes back and forth on a regional scale. And in terms of extreme weather, let me quickly replay some of our ending words from yesterday's news. First of it, it was a rough day weather-wise in the U.S. as well. A bit more of that expected tonight, along with some areas in northeastern Europe, northeastern China, and eastern Australia. It was only the smallest of mentions, but for those in the affected region of China, it was a big, big deal. Yesterday's rainfall triggered a landslide that swallowed part of the town, and then the higher level flooding began. We're going to have some pressure and radar forecasts for top viewer locations, followed by shots of our star to close. If you have somehow still not seen our earthquake challenge, go to spaceweathernews.com slash challenge. It's video learning. As always, everything from these morning news to the free websites and mobile observatory project are supported by you over at suspiciousobservers.org. Four bucks a month or $30 for an entire year's membership. Spend it on a new Blu-ray movie or more than 200 hours of material that actually matters. It's 3.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.